The following video, Merchants of Menace, is a hard-hitting look at the NFL's most vicious tacklers. It is brought to you exclusively by Castrol, the motor oil that provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. I don't go to the movies too often, but uh, one particular movie that stands out in mind uh, was uh, with Betty Davis. I think it was Hush Hush Sweet Charlotte. I got a kind of a charge when that head come rolling down the stairs. Anybody who tells me that they go out there to have fun playing football, they're a liar. Because this game isn't fun. This game is a war. I really just don't like violence, but you know, sometimes, you know, they hit that switch. I'm vicious. Um, no doubt about it. I play the game in a, in a vicious in a vicious manner. I'm not out there to hurt anyone. It's physical, and that's the way it should be. You know, this is not golf or tennis. You know, we're talking football here. Whether it's Hall of Famer Dick Butkus or one of the hottest hitmen of today, the NFL's premier defenses have always been sparked by a certain type of player. A cunning catalyst who lights the team fire. A master of growl and scowl. A merchant of menace. Hi, I'm your host, Harry Carson. Any player is capable of making a great hit, but the men who are merchants of menace are more than just fearsome tacklers. They possess the ability to strike fear into every offensive coordinator's heart. These dynamic defenders are such a force that blocking schemes are altered to stop them. In 1981, such a man became my teammate on the New York Giants. without question the most dominating player that we've seen on defense. I've never seen anybody as big as he is, as fast as he, as he is, and as relentless as he is. Yeah, he, he's relentless. Uh, he has a motor that never goes off. He plays the game a thousand miles an hour, and he's really the most prolific football player that we have to face year in and year out. Phenomenal blitzer. He comes from everywhere all the time. When he hits you, you have to take inventory. You have to see if everything's still hooked up. And, uh, you know, you get up and you start shaking and you make sure your legs are there, your arms are there and everything else. And, and hopefully he doesn't get there too often during the course of a game. Number 56 usually gets to the quarterback with ease. And throughout his nine-year career, stopping LT has posed unique problems for offensive linemen. As Comrade Dover, Dover said, you hold them, then you leg whip them. If that doesn't work, then you tackle them. I feel it's an honor any time a team has to reconstruct their offense or, or do different things and to, um, to block me or, or to take care of me. Taylor gets off the snap so quickly, he often seems guided to the ball by something other than sight or sound. Whether opponents run away from him or right at him, at game's end, his breath usually smells like halfbacks. Beyond his physical gifts, he has the extraordinary ability to concentrate, to harness great mental power to accomplish what he wants to do. I know Lawrence Taylor very well. He's a, as a catalyst. He can, he can provide uh, a lot of things to a team. He told me before the season what he was going to do. So I really didn't make any prediction. I knew what he was going to do because he told me. In 1986, Taylor proved to be as much a prophet as a predator, leading the league with 20 and a half quarterback sacks. I'm not a very uh, technique-oriented person anyway as far as playing the, my position. You never know exactly what you're going to do until the last instant before the ball is snapped. And then that's where creativity comes in. 
I tell you, I, I can go in and run some stunts that they never even heard of, but if it works, I keep running it. I still rely a lot on instinct, on feel. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, I'm in trouble. Taylor's willingness to take chances only adds to his enjoyment of the game. Well, this year, is, I'm just having a lot of fun, you know. There's it's, it's, it's no, you know, no media, media hassles, no, you know, no problems. I'm just having a good time. Hey, baby, let's go out there like a bunch of crazy dogs and have some fun. The more threatened he feels, the more competitive he becomes. He thinks that he can will anything to happen on the field. I love showing my enthusiasm for the game. When I first came here to the Giants, there's one thing they did not have here was enthusiasm um, for, you know, big plays and I do believe every time somebody scores a touchdown on defense, if I'm close to him, I'm going to jump on and, you know, try to wring his neck. In his first four years, Taylor had crossed the goal line only to instigate the Giants' end zone antics, but against the 49ers in 1986, he became the beneficiary of the unbridled zest he had kindled in his teammates. Lawrence Taylor, a true merchant of menace. While others show up for work, he shows up to test his opposition and to find the best in himself. I played 13 seasons for the New York Giants, eight of those seasons with Lawrence Taylor. I can personally attest there isn't a more menacing linebacker in the league. Although now that I think about it, the Patriots' Andre Tippett comes in a close second. Welcome to Foxborough, home of Patriot linebacker Andre Tippett. Enter at your own risk. For in New England resides the AFC's most dominant defensive player, a stop sign to speeding ball carriers, a red light that gives no ample warning. Number 56 attacks from all parts of the field as a right side pass rusher on one down. The next play, striking it rich from the left side. Like a football compass, no matter where you put him, he'll point you to the ball carrier. He might be the most devastating player in the NFL. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where'd he go, D? He can turn a game around individually, and that's very difficult for a defensive player to do. He uh, shocks you. He uh, is explosive. He's probably the quickest guy I've ever seen at linebacker, and uh, definitely you have to change your style of offense to uh, compensate for uh, his ability to rush the passer. What Andre Tippett does best is to take aim at quarterbacks. Hands down and even helmet off, he's virtually unstoppable. Five appearances in the Pro Bowl, Andre Tippett is the Patriots' main merchant of menace. In Denver, that honor falls to number 77. 
Carl Mecklenburg has gone from an unheralded draft pick to a multi-position All-Pro. I've always been overlooked. I mean, I was a 12th round draft choice coming out of college. I had to walk on in college. So uh, everybody likes to prove people wrong, and I feel like I've proved some people wrong. Carl's aggressive nature on the field is a stark contrast to his quiet and reserved nature off it. This Clark Kent becomes Superman in a Broncos jersey, a fact he first demonstrated against the Raiders. It was called The Hit, and though a star wasn't exactly born on that day, the impact and potential had left its mark on the Bronco staff. When Carl first came into our training camp, we realized that he had some unusual skills. He was a guy that kind of was in between the speed of a linebacker you'd like and not quite big enough for a down lineman, yet he could rush the passer like a lineman. He could make tackles like a linebacker and he could cover the field like a linebacker. So uh, Joe and all the defensive coaches came up with some different schemes to put Carl in to really cause some problems. Carl Mecklenburg, Denver's multifaceted, hard-hitting merchant of menace. While Carl Mecklenburg and Andre Tippett are in the prime of their careers, Buffalo's Cornelius Bennett has yet to realize his unlimited potential. Bennett's rise has been so rapid, it's taken him only a season and a half to turn potential into all-pro performance. I'd say he's in the league with the Tippets and the uh, Lawrence Taylors and, and people like that. He's, uh, he's an extra special kind of linebacker. Last year he was great, he was a surprise of the league, he came in and played well. This year he's playing great, he's got a great supporting cast with him. I think Cornelius Bennett is only going to get better. No small compliment when you consider Cornelius Bennett's near-perfect technique. Cornelius Bennett is a rare individual. He's blessed with great physical qualities in all of them. Speed, strength, flexibility, change of direction, jumping ability. He's got great instincts. He loves the game. He's willing to work hard. He's a coach's dream. Well, every week I do some different things that uh, that um, I, I look at on film and I'm kind of amazed at myself, but I don't have to say my overall speed against the run and against the pass is, is my, you know, it's my specialty. I think um, I surprised some of the guys with my strength also. If uh, you see Cornelius Bennett walk in the room and would, were asked to guess how much he weighed, you might say, oh, 190, 195, but yet when he gets on the scale, he's about 235. He's an amazingly well put together young man, great body flexibility, uh, and, and he perceives what's happening around him so well. Uh, he's a modest guy, it was all work, he came to play. In Bennett and number 78, Bruce Smith, the Bills have twin merchants of menace. Perhaps the finest young defenders in all of pro football. You know, we finished number one in the AFC and um, total defense, and I think, you know, the reason why, because we have 11 guys out there uh, playing, you know, playing their hearts out. But only two of them play, like Bennett and Smith. Cornelius Bennett and Bruce Smith are two of the brightest new stars in the National Football League. 
But the Philadelphia Eagles' Reggie White has already ascended to the pinnacle of his profession as the best defensive lineman in the game. Some say this menacing minister may even be the best of all time. Few defensive players have ever had a better season than number 92 Philadelphia's Reggie White enjoyed in 1987. With 21 sacks in just 12 games, White was one shy of tying Mark Gastineau's NFL record. Though his talent is immense, this licensed minister gives credit to a higher authority. To people looking at Reggie White, I want them to see Jesus so that they can maybe come and ask me, hey, what, what makes you do this? What makes you get past the guy, get to the quarterback? What makes you get 21 sacks in 12 games? I let them know, hey, it's Jesus. Since joining the Eagles five years ago, White has delivered the gospel on Sundays in the form of the big play. As far as making the big plays when we needed them, they weren't really happening as, as often as, it, as they are now that Reggie's in there. He's made a tremendous impact on our defense. There was no greater testament to his talent than this astounding play against the Redskins' Doug Williams. Back goes Doug Williams, head sack back at the 30. Reggie White comes up with the football. Pulled the ball away and took off for a touchdown. That was almost like magic. His wife Sarah is here and she is probably hysterical. The first time I met him, we were introduced in a church. And I looked at him, and of course, the, the normal thing that you think, God, this guy's big. I knew he had the power. I, I really did, but I didn't realize it was this much power. That power, a lot of people would not understand. That's what I have, I feel like, in that edge, that when people see what I do on the field, they can come to me and ask me, where do you get the strength? How do you do it? And I can let them know it. You got to put your faith in the action. White's work ethic resulted in a season in which he produced four more sacks than the entire Atlanta Falcons team. His coach, Buddy Ryan, calls him the greatest defensive player he's ever seen. White, an accomplished impressionist, obviously earns respect. No, I tell you, I tell you, you know my coach, Buddy Ryan, I tell you, he's so ugly. When he cry, tears go down the back of his head, avoid his face, I tell you. Don't cut me for that, Buddy, okay? <laughs> he is a player that has to dominate the game. Now he's the best defensive lineman I've ever been around with. The ability the good Lord gave him is unbelievable. On the pass rush, I think my best asset is a bull rush. A lot of offensive linemen, they pride in not letting the guy run over. But uh, I've been able to do that in just about every game I've played. Most of the time, bull rushing would take a lot of energy out of him. But I've been blessed enough where it had taken a lot of energy out of me. So that's probably my best asset as a pass rush is to run over again. I try to play the game fair, to play it like it needs to be played, and to, to reach a level that, that no one else has reached, and that's to be the best at what I do. While Reggie White is the most feared pass rusher in the game today, Dan Hampton of the Bears is the most complete. Known as Danimal, Hampton, number 99, doesn't have to look hard to find admirers throughout the NFL. Everybody always looks at how he rushes the passer. That's great, he does. But he plays run so well. He might play the run as good as anybody, any lineman. And he's capable of dominating a football game. In other words, uh, if you get him in that situation enough and you can't get help on him, then he's going to kind of take over the game. He's a large human being. You know, he's tall, he's strong, and he's, he's intense. He's, uh, he's a good guy, too, a good old country boy. Down on his Arkansas farm, Hampton has sown the fruits of his football labors, creating an off-season haven away from the pressures of the game. I'm kind of proud of this tractor. I like it a whole lot. And a couple years ago when Buddy Ryan came down, he liked my farm and, uh, you know, the horses and the cattle and everything. 
Boy, but he loved his tractor. He, he'd had some old tractors. And when he got the job in Philadelphia, he told me, he said, now I can afford one of those tractors like what you got. And that's what he did. He went and bought him a new tractor when he got the new job in Philadelphia. Come on, you bunch of fat cows. Come eat something. See? Some of Hampton's farm assets must be fed twice a day. I'm not just a country boy or a cowboy. I just grew up in the country and I like the outdoors. And that's why I like what I'm doing right now. So it's not like this is, you know, I get up and I work from dawn to exhaustion every day. The heifers hear their master's voice at the feeding trough. But at night, Dan Hampton sings a different kind of tune. A sweet little thing. After 11 years in the Windy City, Chicago blues have become a favorite of this rock and roll danimal. Actually, I think John Madden brought that up. He, he called, he said, well, R Randy White is a manster. This guy could be danster or something like that. Well, when we got back to Chicago, uh, some reporters told me that. I said, no, nah, I don't want to be danster. If you want to call me anything, call me danimal, which is what some of the guys in college call me. Dan Hampton, he has fingers that, you know, go like this and point out this way and some of them, he, you tell him to make a fist and only about one finger goes down and the other ones stay out. And here's a guy who plays as well as he does and doesn't have a good hand or arm or leg. If he didn't have the injuries that he had, they'd probably have to outlaw him for football. I found out how resilient the body is and, and that's why I don't really make a lot out of injuries. I know the body will overcome them and you just got to keep, you know, your attitude up and, and try the best with what you've got. Bad hands or not, Dan Hampton has a firm grip on football, his farm, and his future. As a former player, and I still can't get used to saying that, I can tell you Dan Hampton's ability to play with pain earns him respect around the league. Another who commands respect among his peers was one of the National Football League's best cornerbacks and now is one of its best safeties. It's San Francisco's Ronnie Lott. Ronnie has been, was considered the best cornerback in football in 1981 and 1982. But he's a big man and he doesn't have quite the quickness that some of the smaller men do. He was really more of a safety type. And once Ronnie has found himself in that role, he quickly has become the best in football. I think he found himself a new home. I, uh, he reads the quarterback very well and, and studies teams very well, which has been very obvious to us. Ronnie's become the quarterback for the defense, the signal caller for our defense uh, uh, just prior to the snap of the ball. He's a very dynamic player as far as his hitting ability and reaction to the ball, and it's uh, had quite an impact on the rest of our defensive players. I think his greatest strength is just the way he attacks. You know, he's in on every play, and when he comes and cracks one of those wide receivers or something, it just gets me going. expected me to be a great free safety more so than being a great corner. Uh, playing corner was a challenging position for me because I wasn't supposed to play that position. But uh, playing free safety, everybody expected me to be an all pro and that was a challenge in itself. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that everybody felt that their predictions were true. Today's higher revving and hotter running engines, wear is a greater problem than ever before. Oil breakdown can shorten the life of vital engine parts.